Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Convention Confessional. My name is Katie Hunt, and I'm here to bring you the good, the bad, the ugly of any kind of convention out there. And today, to continue the month of uh, Twilight, we have yet another wonderful cast member of the uh, Forever Twilight and Forks convention, uh, Miss Samantha Rose Baldwin. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Well, you know, can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Life, life's getting a little bit better now that the world decided to open back up so that's exciting very very true yes i'm excited to be able to actually have the festival this year mm-hmm. i know that's what i mean like now the world's opening back up we can do conventions again i know it's a beautiful thing <laughs> so please dear introduce yourself to the world well, hello. My name is Samantha. I am I'm an actress. I normally live out in LA, but you know, COVID hit, kicked me back home to New York. Um, but I uh, I currently play Rosalie for the Olympic Coven at the Forever Twilight and Forks Festival. I was introduced as Renezme when I was a a wee young baby, um, <laughs> and I've uh, I've kind of grown with the Olympic Coven for the past almost ten years now. So I originally started playing Renesme, and then that turned into Victoria when our um, our OC legacy member um, retired, our very first Victoria retired. Um, but in the spur of that, I actually didn't get to bring Victoria to the ground and forks. So in 2019, you guys have spoken with Christy Lynn. Love Christy Lynn with all my heart. She's been my Bella from the very beginning. Um, in 2019, she actually had her own little baby, um, mm -hmm. and it was kind of last minute and she wasn't able to make it. So I had to step in as her understudy last minute. So I was Bella for the past two years with COVID and whatnot. And I've officially stepped into Rosalie as my new forever role. And I'm very, very excited to explore so this like vampire here. <laughs> I, I've played quite a few. <laughs> like Edward, get out of here. <laughs> I would say the biggest transformation I've done so far was my Charlie. I'm very proud of that. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> there was this, uh, there was this one year where I think it was 2018. After the festival, I was, you know, I was getting back into my second Twilight phase. You know how we're all doing right now. Right. Um, but I went up on my own little trip to see our makeup artist. Um, her name is Sam as well. Um, won't get them mixed up. But right. <laughs> I, I went up to her and it was around the Halloween season. So we just spent a week transforming me into different characters. So I was a couple of the Denali girls. I did Jane. I did a, a morbid vampire Bella. Or not vampire Bella. It was a pregnant Bella. Mm -hmm. No. Pre-vampire post-pregnancy. You know. Sure, um, sure. <laughs> And then just turned me with a couple of the humans and the the most off the wall one that we did there was was Charlie because we were we were digging through her her makeup box because she had gone to makeup school over in Seattle. That's actually how we found her. Mm -hmm. And I, I found this mustache beard combo and I was like, Sam, do you need this? And she was like, absolutely not. Why? And I was like, I'm going to cut it up real quick. And I made a mustache and she just turned me into Charlie and it was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go you really literally been everybody then yeah there we go <laughs> it's an ongoing joke that i'm just going to recreate the entire film but i'm going to play every character <laughs> <laughs> we're going to redo this but you'll never know i was everybody it's like oh <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and that's where you're at in the pandemic got it <laughs> pretty much that's how i'm mentally coping with the state of the world right now is i'm just becoming twilight Right, it's also <laughs> like you're at Tribeca and like Twilight comes back out again. People are like, what is this? Yeah, right? <laughs> so you've literally grown up with the convention, so. I have. It almost feels like I was kind of raised in Forks. Mm -hmm. So the, the first time I ever came out, it was 2012. I had taken a trip out with my mom and it was just kind of a little reward for doing well in school. I think that was the seventh grade that I was in. Mm -hmm. And the first... I'm sorry, the the end of our Forks portion of the trip, because we spent a couple days in Forks, spent a couple days in Seattle, um, but the end of our Forks portion, the last day corresponded with the first day of what was then Stephanie Meyer Day. Um, and I had been going back and forth with the woman who was organizing the festival at the time. Her name is Stacy. 
Um, and at the time I was a young girl with long red hair and everyone was like, oh my God, you look like Renesme. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So I, I met up with the whole Olympic coven in 2012 in Forks. And it was a very interesting conversation to have with my mom to be like, oh, hey, mom, can I meet with these adults that I met on the internet? And she was like, what? Um, <laughs> It's not weird. It's not weird. I swear to God. I, like, I promise it's not. But she was she was very, very understanding. She's been very, very supportive from the beginning. So what we did was I met everyone at Alice's Closet, which was a store in Forks at the time that sold like Twilight memorabilia and uh, replicas from mm-hmm. Bella's Closet because that was that was all the rage at the time. It's actually starting to become quite the rage again. Um, so I met with the Olympic Coven and we took a couple test photos. I had half of my costume put together so the first Renesme costume I had put together was the the battle costume so she wears a little purple pea coat and a whole bunch of other little accessories so I had half of that put together we took a couple photos and they just tossed me into the first event of of the the weekend there sure. and I guess it was a hit it was a hit because I've, I've been here ever since so. <laughs> and now I'm here <laughs> that's kind of a long-winded introduction into what I'm doing now but there you go <laughs> I know the show's over now so okay. well, well, there you go <laughs> I mean, I was worried I wasn't going to be able to find enough things to say, and it looks like I'm just kind of word vomiting here, but it's fine. There we go. <laughs> now we're two hours into it. And... Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, that's fine. No, it's good, because like I said, like, people have been going to this. Hopefully some of them are listening now, um, you know, and they just want to know this stuff. It's just like, how long have you been with it? Like, what have you done? Like I said, you've played multiple characters. You um, you were almost a villain, officially. Yeah. Um, you've played members of the family. Um, I think it's funny that you've played both Renesmee and Bella to the same Edward, correct? Yeah, so that was... <laughs> like, oh! The, the joke we have is he went from dad to daddy, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, was, no. It was actually a very easy transition. So, like, I've been working alongside Alan since the very beginning, and Alan is always... He's he's a people person, mm-hmm. and he's probably one of the most incredible people to work next to. Um, and the the very first kind of test that we had to do, so it was 2019, and what we did was we had gone down to the filming locations in the Portland area to do a couple test photo shoots because at the at the end of the festival we they give us an opportunity to sit down sign autographs and sell prints and whatnot and people will be able to like take photos home and whatnot sure. so we went and went down to the filming locations took a couple test photos and the first one that we did was we reenacted the um tree scene from twilight like the lion and the lamb scene mm-hmm. um and there was there was a lot of giggling at the beginning definitely but um <laughs> With the level of performer that Alan is and then my experience in, in the industry, it was really easy to just kind of snap into character and just kind of lead with that. Sure. And it, it was a much easier transition than you would have thought <laughs> going right. from my father to my boyfriend. Right. But... <laughs> to your husband. I know. <laughs> it was a very quick. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually, it was really easy that year because it was New Moon was the theme. Sure. So Edward actually wasn't around a lot. And I oh, spent oh, oh, yeah, abandonment well, my... issues, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I spent a lot of my time with Mark, who plays our Jacob. And mm-hmm. when I was Renesmee, I spent most of my time with Mark anyway. So there wasn't a huge change right. in that dynamic. Right, except that he you also, like, once again, you turned into a lover to a possible lover. Yeah. <laughs> like, now I'm not good enough for you? Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah. awesome. No, I said, like you, like I, said I, I told the others, like, you guys all do such a great job. I mean, like, you're all seem like a very tight-knit group of people that you've all just worked together for so long. Oh, it's kind of like you so much. your own little family kind of going on there. And we are, too. And that's one of the things that um, some people see, some people don't. But first and foremost, we're we're a group of friends, and it's a labor of love. And that's I feel like that's why we have the dynamic that we do is because we're all just having a good time and enjoying each other's company and and it allows us to kind of give our best performance and have the best time here and make the best memories you know yeah absolutely yeah i mean like uh, again mentioned with the other girls it's kind of like your own like forks disneyland 
Oh, exactly. That's that's the easiest way to describe what we do. Because when people ask what we do, or when I explain what we do to people, it can be very hard to understand. It's like, oh, I dress up as a Twilight character for four days. I know it's weird. Um, <laughs> Don't no, me. <laughs> exactly. No, but the easiest way to describe it is the town of Forks turns into a Twilight theme park. It turns into Twilight Disneyland, and we're the equivalent of the princesses that you meet. We'll interact with you in character. We take photos. We sign autographs in character, and we give this immersive element to the town and you really just feel like you're in the story. It's an incredible thing. And then there's different events too, right? There are. So the main events that we normally do every year is Bella's birthday Mm because the Forever Twilight and Forks Festival always falls on the weekend of Bella's birthday. And Stephanie Meyer Day was that way as well. So it's September 13th. It's whatever the closest weekend is around that. Mm -hmm. Um, this year is actually, I believe the first year in a while where the 13th actually doesn't fall on a day that will be here. Mm. So I don't believe we're celebrating Bella's birthday this year. We're celebrating a couple other things. Um, but it'll normally be, you'll attend Bella's birthday party, or if we're celebrating Breaking Dawn, you'll, you'll attend the wedding reception. And it's their big events from the story that you'll get to kind of live out through your own eyes. You'll get to be placed right in it. That's awesome. Yeah, like a Disney park ride. You're like, oh, Frozen yeah. forever. Like you go through the whole spiel of the movie. Like this one, exactly. you're into the movie. It's like. Exactly. And being even like, regardless of the role that I play within the festival, there is always a certain point where I'll look around and I'm like, you know, I'm here in Forks. Edward's over there. Alice is bouncing, bouncing around in the corner. Um, and it just, it really does bring the town and the story to life. And that's why I always say it should be on every Twilight fan's bucket list to go at least once and experience it yeah absolutely so yeah so working a convention like that for so long i mean you you've got to have some stories you've got to have some weird fan encounters or something oh goodness um (laughs) so um i don't have a ton of like weird things that kind of stand out because when we get into it we get into it the entire weekend just ends up feeling like a blur to all of us because we're so in character the whole time yeah and that's that's the thing is when you're talking to us we will not break character you can try as hard as you want ask ask us questions like ask us about our contacts they're not contacts they're our eyes for the weekend um so we get so into it it's very very hard to actually remember what actually truly happened during these weekends and then we'll all usually get sick afterwards because of the the contacts and the long hours and everything the lack of sleeping we turn into vampires truly um but i heard that you were already told about our ninja <laughs> so I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah we've all heard the ninja story no ninjas allowed oh well, yeah no no more ninjas allowed that year was particularly fun that was either my that was my second year, my first or my second. And I remember with some of the events having to have a team of handlers around me because I was a minor at the time. And I was this little girl running around in these little skirts. And there's this grown man slinging ninja stars around. And they were like, protect the child at all costs. <laughs> Forget the adult, just watch the child. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and your mom's standing there going, you are never coming back. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, because <laughs> until I was 18, my parents came every year. So my mom came the first two or three years, and then my dad would come. Um, and my mom's just over in the corner being like, oh, my God, this is my child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there there hasn't been a ton of negative experiences like that. And honestly, the way that you look at that, it depends on how you look at it. Like, is it a negative experience, or is it a, is it a cool story that you can tell? Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's definitely one that we all never forget. But no, one of the one of the most memorable things that I kind of have to go back into. Um, so I'm I'm an actor, and mm-hmm. that's kind of the career path that I've chosen. And I found that through Forks. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, it was never something that sparked my interest. Um, we would do like plays in school and whatnot, and I had no interest at all. I was a stagehand. I just wanted to be as far away from the stage as possible, and coming into Forks kind of made me come out of my shell. Like it forced me to talk to people, to be personable and things like that. And one thing led to another and it really just inspired me to like take this, which I was learning to love and pursue it as a career. Um, And my acting coach um, always talks about this. There's something called the vanishing point 
when you're acting. And my acting coach, Dennis Laval, who coincidentally enough is Kellen Lutz's acting coach as well. I didn't find that out until years later. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, just a little small world there. Um, there's this thing called the vanishing point and what it is when you, when you're so submerged in a role that at a certain point, your thoughts disappear and the character's thoughts come up. And that's all that you experience is you live through the character's eyes. And that's kind of where you aspire to be as an actor is to be that submerged in a character. And in 2019, um, when I had to step into Bella, it was an incredible experience because I, I got that. I got to go to the vanishing point, um, per se. I remember being at Bella's birthday party. So it was, it was my birthday party. And I was just running around and biting my lip and pretending like I hated it. Um, Even though inside you're just like, oh my God, I get to be Bella and this is my birthday. <laughs> oh yeah. And like, that was the thing too. Like being Bella was never something that I ever aspired to be at the festival because Christy mm. Lynn was always my Bella. Right. Like I, I grew up looking up to her following her blog, which I'm sure you guys talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I, and I was just kind of into the whole Bella clothing community thing and whatnot. And she, when she asked me to step in, I was I was just so grateful to be able to live out this like 12 year old dream that I never thought that I'd get the chance to do. Um, but when we were at the birthday party there, there was a moment where Alan and I had to go out and dance. So they played like flightless bird. Um, we were, everyone cleared the dance floor. We were just surrounded by a room of like 40 or a hundred people. I can't remember. Um, and we were dancing. He lifts me up on his feet and I look up at him and I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm, I'm dancing with Edward Cullen like my thoughts were gone <laughs> and it was only thoughts of like oh my god Edward I love you, <laughs> you know right. I mean? like, now it's just weird now it's weird <laughs> but it was just it was so interesting to have the opportunity to be so submerged in the character that you really get to a point where you you are just you are the character and that's just how your brain works and being an actor and like aspiring towards that it's allowed me to learn so much about character development and character study and how to get into character and it's being that I kind of found <laughs> my love for acting through Twilight it was a nice little full circle thing where I've been able to grow my actual um my my craft through this little this little community that we have here and it's also like a testament to your like your co-actors and stuff that you're working with too that they can help you get submerged like that Oh, yeah. And it's not even them like trying to help me. It's just them being so good at their jobs. Because mm -hmm. like I said, when we're there, we are in character and we do not break. Mm -hmm. you, you like you cannot get us to unless there's a certain kind of situation. Or if we're at one of the other events where we're not in character. So like at the end of the festival every year, there'll be a little event um, where we'll all go and say goodbye and do karaoke and you know, and and at that event, we're ourselves and we can talk to people. But other than that, we're we're the characters and that's what we're hired to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's been a really beautiful thing to just be able to watch and then to see people's reactions to that. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I remember being on the dance floor with Alan and looking around and like seeing people crying just because they were they were so submerged in it themselves and like they're seeing their story come to life right in, right in front of their eyes. Yeah, V had talked about, like, a point where it was, like, one of the weddings, I think you all did. Yeah. And, like, and the Cullens went out to go dance with them. And it was, like, the same thing. It was, like, oh, my gosh, I'm a part of this. Like, <laughs> And that's one of the cool things about the festival, too, is, so, granted, I, I was Renesmee that year when we were doing the wedding thing and we were all dancing. So, what we had done, clearly, Renesmee wouldn't be at her parents' wedding. <laughs> um, but what we did was, so, Mark and I were off to the side, um, and the family was dancing and whatnot. And for the very last verse of the song, Mark and I came onto the dance floor and we're dancing as Renesmee and Jacob. And you kind of get a glimpse into what the future of these characters would be off the page, like how their story would continue farther than what we've been told. And I, I that's one of my favorite things about that too, is to be able to to extend the story for for everyone that's there and see their see their reactions to it really. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So any, any highlight moments for you? Like, again, doing so many characters, like anything you're looking forward to, like coming up as far as being Rosalie goes? Oh, I'm ridiculously excited to be Rosalie. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalie is the one character that I've never gotten to try, but I've always really wanted to. 
Mm -hmm. And through the past couple years where I've, I've had all of this Bella content, um, I've had people comment and be like, oh, you should do Rosalie instead. Like your, your face shape is more like Rosalie. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've been told that quite a bit. And I've, there's this level of glamour to Rosalie and this almost like old Hollywood starlet-esque that I've always loved about her. And I'm so excited to be able to put that on its feet. And like, I, I'm a fashion girl myself. I love heels. I love clothes. I love everything like that. And being Victoria, Bella, Renezme, I've never, I can't do any of that. I've never been like a woman in a role. Victoria was as close as I almost got to like being my full developed self. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm excited to to see what Rosalie has to offer and to be able to like to play up on that, you know, being being a woman now and, you know, having grown out of out of my role as Renez May and I, I'm just really excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean and now you get to be Edward's sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just keep hopping around the family. I need to ask Alan how that makes him feel. <laughs> it's just like and his now, perspective on me is always having to change. Right? He comes back the next year, he's like, Okay, who are you now? <laughs> yeah, right. And that's kind of that's how it is. That's how it's kind of been starting to go. Is we come back, it's like, All right, who's Sam this year? We don't know. <laughs> In that and see that's where getting all dressed up as the different characters comes into play because it's just like, you don't know who I am. <laughs> and that's that's one thing that I love too is like you toss on the wig and the contacts and it's just it's a full transformation oh yeah and it's kind of allowed me to so when I get into character the biggest thing for me is the physicalities so it's like being able to look in the mirror and see someone else it makes it that much easier to become a different person but uh no, I, I feel like I'm, I'm touching more on, like, the, the performance aspect of it than I am the actual, like, convention aspect. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I mean, like I said, you guys are, like, a big part of this whole thing. So it's, like, it's kind of like giving a view to people where it's, like, you know, behind the scenes thing. Because they just see you guys, you come out, and you're the family. Like, they don't really yeah. understand kind of what goes into being part of the family. Oh, and there's there's so much that goes into it. and And the festival itself has never really felt like convention to me. Um, believe it or not, so the the way that we do it and the format that it's held in through more recent years, um, how it's grown, it has started to feel a little more like a convention. But like with the events that we hold, like the parties and the galas and the dinners and even the signings, they don't like they feel different than a traditional convention. For example, we have guests that come out every year, actors from the films, and they will there will be a section where they'll do signings and have Q and A's and, you know, have photo ops and things like that. But they'll also, they'll be at the galas and they'll be at the parties and they'll just be walking around and mixing and mingling with people. And it's very casual. Mm -hmm. It's very, very casual. And I think that's one of the coolest elements about it that you wouldn't normally get at a convention. Right. Oh yeah. No, like conventions, like a normal, like setup convention is if you have a guest or something, they'll go around like the dealer's room. You'll see them kind of poking around, but they've always got like somebody with them at all times. Exactly. It's and like, like, yeah, like keeping them away from people just so they can kind of have like a moment to breathe or whatever. Whereas like, you know, like things like you're talking about, is just kind of like a, Hey, you're a part of it. So please feel free to enjoy it. Oh yeah. Like I remember in, in 2018, just walking around one of the parties, it was actually the the wedding reception party that we were just talking about and I was walking outside and we were just hanging out with uh Jackson who plays Jasper mm -hmm. um and he was just you know casually having conversations with people and he wasn't being swarmed and that's something that I think is really beautiful how people will treat the actors like they are people and mm -hmm. they won't be in their face and like trying to be next to them the whole time like they'll let different crowds come and go and like I from what I've seen the actors don't get overwhelmed people are very respectful of their time. You know, it's funny as you bring up like the wedding scene, you bring up Jackson Rathbone. And <laughs> I was doing a watch through again last summer um, mm -hmm. of Twilight and I got to Breaking Dawn. And I don't know, I, again, I, I read all the books. I've, I've watched the movies probably a dozen times each, just, you know, being on TV or whatever. And I don't know why I never noticed it, but there's a scene and I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but at the wedding when Bella mm -hmm. and Edward are going to leave for their honeymoon, mm -hmm. Like, they're just casually talking to, um, you know, um, Bella's parents or whatever, Charlie or yeah. whatever. And all of a sudden, in the background, you see Jasper go by with, like, 30 bags. What? Like, by himself. He's just carrying all of the luggage <laughs> by himself. And Alice is like, la, 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 behind him. 
No, I've never and I remember seen looking that. Watching the back, I'm like, how did I never know? Like the whole party's full of people that are clearly, you know, some vampires, a lot not vampires. It's like, and no one just noticed this one scrawny dude go by with like all the luggage, <laughs> like sixteen bags of luggage. Oh, no, I've never noticed that. I don't know. Please how go I back and that. watch it. It's hysterical hysterical and i'm just oh thinking to, and i'm just thinking to myself and i'm like man talk about reenacting at forks it's like stuff like that where like if you guys are doing the party at the end of it and just having your poor your poor jasper go by with like 30 bags by himself <laughs> and anyone notices. oh no and, and we'll, we'll do things like that like right. if we get the opportunity to do like little standalone things like that that people might notice we'll do it and you oh. know we might just have to do that <laughs> well, i i honestly if i ever saw a picture of that would lose my shit because <laughs> It was the best thing. And I like I honestly had to rewind it like three times. I'm like, how did nobody notice him? Like that's so funny. No, I'll have to go back and look. I've actually I've been watching like that section of Breaking Dawn quite a bit lately because Mm -hmm. um I've so one of the things that we do is we take the convention as well and we continue it online throughout the year. To sure. kind of keep people engaged and for the, those who can't make it out to Forks, keep them involved and things like that. So social media has become a huge part of what we do. Um, and after 2019, I had this just plethora of content um, as Bella. And I was like, you know, I need some kind of creative outlet to put all this on. So I started an Instagram account um, with all of my Bella content that has grown like at an intense rate that sometimes I just can't wrap my head around. <laughs> Um, and one of the things that I've been doing on there is now, aside from the festival, I'll kind of just go off and create my own content for that and just kind of use that to help more people find us and find the festival and what we do. Yep. Um, but one of the things that I've been working on lately is recreating the wedding because mm-hmm. I kind of, I've, I've gone kind of in a little bit of a chronological order with like the content that I put out, um, in regards to the films. And we were recreating the wedding and I've been looking at all the little details like that, but just the support that, that I've been seeing from like fans to like help out with stuff like that has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad that I can contribute to your No, thank you. <laughs> Seriously. I'll, I'll have to go and just get a bunch of luggage now and just have it on set. Just oh my God. It, yeah. Like all the Louis Vuitton <laughs> luggage. I just, oh uh, God, it just cracks me up. And like oh I said, she, like, you think like Alice would be helping. No, she literally just like skipping along behind him. And it's just like, no, oh, yeah. no one else see this. <laughs> no, that, that's what I love about that scene in Breaking Dawn is that it's just Alice is there telling everyone what to do. You will not see her lift a finger. Mm-hmm. Um, she is there to have creative control and she has everybody working for her. And I love that. Yes, the manipulation is real. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, she's, Please move she's, that. Thank she's you. She's a smart businesswoman. She's a party planner. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Um, so you guys have had a bunch of guests come out um, to Forks for the event. Yes. Is there anybody that hasn't come out that you would love to see come out sometime? Um, well, Billy Burke was one, the guy who plays Charlie, and he's coming out this year. I know, so that's amazing. that's going to be very, very fun. Um, I would love to, of course, everyone would love to see the original trio, you know, Kristen, Taylor, and Rob, but mm-hmm. that'll probably never happen. Um, yep. <laughs> not to not to put any bad juju on it, but it's just not they're only, all so busy. They're all so busy. They're so disconnected from Twilight, and their appearance fee is probably through the roof. Um, <laughs> but I would love to see like Carlisle and Esme come out, like Peter Facinelli and Elizabeth Reeser, just to because mm-hmm. I know that they're fan favorites. Yeah, and I love seeing everyone's reaction to seeing them in person. Oh, I love Peter Facinelli. I, I loved him before Twilight. I think he's such a good actor. Oh, he's great. Like a nurse Jackie. He he plays a good doctor. I, I see I see why he ended up where he is. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, other than that, we've had a lot of guests come. Mm-hmm. Like we've had the majority of the Wolf Pack, a solid chunk of the Voltori. Um the only the only Cullen that we've had, I do believe, was only Jackson that year. Mm-hmm. um but we've had like Catherine Hardwick come out like I would love to see like Melissa Rosenberg who's the screenwriter or Wick Godfrey one of the producers just because that side of the whole production really interests me oh yeah and because they're like that granted they're not a character you don't see them on a screen except for the two seconds of the wedding um 
I, there's a whole nother side to this fandom that we don't really get to see. We got a little bit of that when um, Catherine Hardwick had come out in 2018. So Catherine Hardwick came out along with Nancy Kirkpatrick and Eric Copps. And they are two people who worked for Summit during the, the time of the Twilight phenomenon. So they were able to share like information about like what it was like setting up the fan camps and involving the fandom in the production and like the legalities of everything. And I think that's really interesting. I love hearing things like that. Um, and like Catherine Hardwick came and she shared a slideshow of a bunch of like different set photos that were in her private collection. She refused to put out there. Like no one was allowed to record the Q and A that Catherine was doing because of the things that she was sharing. Uh -huh. um, and I just, that's the aspect that I just find so fascinating. And I know a lot of others do as well. Oh yeah. So. And, like, and like I said, people think that like the only thing that brings the movie to life are the people that are acting in it. And they definitely oh, no. do. Cause I mean, you don't have a movie unless you have somebody, you know, to say the lines. But exactly. I think a lot of it is just like, you know, the people that do the set designs or the set scouting yeah. or no, there's you know, about 10,000 other people who go into making this movie. What right. Do you think? right. Like <laughs> all the editing and the effects and exactly. like you had to make Edward sparkle somehow. You didn't just glue glitter to him. Yeah. You know, I see, I would love for one of the special effects artists to come out and explain like how they made the wolves or how they made the sparkles. Like you see a little bit of that on like the behind the scenes on the DVDs and whatnot, but right. I, for them to explain their whole process, I think would be so cool. And be I know real. a lot of other people would too. Be a real with me right now. Yeah. Do, do your vampire sparkle if it's sunny out? <laughs> we try. So <laughs> <laughs> please tell me we, how you accomplish this. <laughs> we've been trying so many different ways to capture a sparkle throughout the years. And it's very hard to just not throw on glitter mm -hmm. because if you do throw on glitter, if even if you're standing in a shadow, you're still going to be covered in glitter. Yeah, glitter is just um, the herpes of the craft world. Exactly. So we've, we've been playing around with different things throughout the years. We've tried like different like sparkle body sprays and whatnot, and those have helped. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that we do is we use um, a finishing powder by Hourglass. Mm -hmm. um and it's i can't remember the exact name of it but it does have a like sparkle shimmer to it so everyone is who's a vampire is finished off with that mm -hmm. and when we are in the sunlight there is a little bit of a shimmer there okay. okay i don't know if a lot of people notice because it is very subtle right but that i that's where our makeup artist's mind is to try and capture that right but and we've we've been trying for a very long time. Filter doesn't help either. <laughs> what was that? Like all those Snapchat filters. You're like, good enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was say, and being in that part of it, I mean, how often is it sunny out there? Like you guys are pretty like clouded over most of the time, right? You know, you'd think, but Forks weather I find is very unpredictable. Mm. So the the past years of the festival, it has always been sunny it's whenever everyone is here they come for the twilight weather and they don't get it they get sunny like 60 70 degrees and it's great weather for the event but people, you're not getting the rain that you wanted to see in forks right the past the past couple of years it has rained more mm -hmm. um it has been kind of gloomy which has been really nice for everyone to enjoy um but in 2020 when we had to do everything virtually we um what we did was we had filmed kind of like a series of short films that we then premiered to everyone online um, in a live stream format. When we filmed those, it was 90 degrees and sunny on the beach and we had to pretend to be cold and it's just so difficult to do. Yeah, right? Yeah. We just put on these parkers and these hats and oh man, it's so cold out. Like, eh. and, and we're just sitting here like wiping the sweat off of our face and reapplying the makeup every 10 minutes. And Oh God. Yeah. No. Um, I used to work at a big convention down in, um, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Um, and one year we did a twilight, um, crossover with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Nice. And the same thing. We have to film all of our promotional trailers and everything in the summer because the convention's yep. like in July, August. So here we are in like the middle of June, beginning of July. It is 95 in the shade. Um, and we're in full like leather or full, oh, yeah. like, you know, Cullen attire, like trying to film in someone's house. And you're just like, can we turn the AC on? No, because it's too loud. You're like, okay. 
<laughs> okay, I'm not going to shimmer. I'm just going to sweat. Do vampires yeah, people run around with fans trying to keep everybody cool. And... <laughs> yeah, basically. She's like, yeah. I'm just going to towel myself off because I don't think vampires sweat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel, I mean, in that regard, I definitely feel for you guys because it's just like, oh, oh yeah. God. But we've, and like, gosh, and that's like for anything, not just Twilight stuff. We filmed like everything for that convention um in like 90 degree weather like full dance numbers or oh gosh oh yeah because we did a whole year that was glee for the dating game that we were doing and um i was in a full i was blaine anderson i don't know if you ever saw glee i mean i feel no, like I yeah I was, i've seen a couple episodes but i don't know the characters right, right, right. i was blaine anderson but he's always wearing a sweater vest he's always got a bow tie like you know button yep. down shirt and we're outside filming like a glee musical number in like 95 degree weather <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep, so in, that res- in that respect i feel for anybody because just like oh god you have to be in this like this costume of all days like why exactly <laughs> and like we'll get here and it'll be 90 degrees and i'm looking over at christy lynn and she's in a thermal a hoodie a jacket like snow boots um and I'm like poor thing yeah but i feel like it was <laughs> cold anyways so it's like it probably didn't bother she's like oh i'm comfortable you're like you would be yeah right <laughs> you would be. i get it <laughs> literally oh man yeah awesome well you know what samantha thank you so much for coming on the show it's been a delight it's been lovely talking to you oh it's been such a pleasure i hope i i hope i didn't steer too far away from the actual convention conversation there oh, but no no you're fine everything <laughs> right on point um is there anything you would like to promote for yourself um well there's a couple little things so of course be sure to check out the festival like i said we do a lot of things online throughout the year so the official festival handle is at forever twilight and forks we actually just joined tiktok on there um, and the festival runs that the olympic coven doesn't really as much um but yeah they just they just hopped on tiktok so that's been cool to see mm-hmm. um the Olympic Coven is on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, under at the Olympic Coven, all across the board, except for Twitter. We're like Olympic Coven PNW on Twitter. Um, but on there, we we create content all year round to just keep everyone involved, keep keep the sparkle alive, as they say. <laughs> um, and we we have a couple of different things as well, where we have a Patreon where people can subscribe and kind of help us with the wigs and the contacts and everything and the expenses that you don't really see in front of the camera Mm -hmm. that really go into helping us like bring these characters to life and wardrobe pieces and things like that. And so that's a patreon.com slash the Olympic coven if you're interested. Um, And and we have exclusive content that we'll do on there. And like we send out Christmas cards to our Patreon family every year, which is always fun, but um what else so myself you can find me online on instagram i am at samantha rose baldwin that's just kind of me doing my my thing over there but if you are interested in the that little bella account that i was talking about before it's uh just bella swan and that's kind of what i've been spending my time doing over quarantine so (laughs) awesome great yeah well thank you so much i hope you guys have a great weekend Oh, thank you so much, and you as well. And thank you for wanting to to have us on the show here. This is it's been absolutely incredible, and I've heard great things from everybody who you've been talking to. Oh so. no, stop! <laughs> I have, I have. <laughs> that's because it's Christy Lynn, and I don't think she can say a mean thing about anybody. So God, that's so true. <laughs> she's, she's, <laughs> she's a better person than all of us. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, I hope you guys have a really successful weekend. I can't wait to see the stuff that comes out of it. Please don't forget my Jasper picture. That's all I ask. Of course not. No, we'll we'll get on that. (laughs) I'm so excited. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you so much. You too.